Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee at the War Memorial Auditorium with Tony. Tony from Pierce the Veil. Tony, how are you doing? Good. Good. Thank Everything. you. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about your uh, your setup here. Yeah. It's very exciting. And let's dive right into it. I see a whole batch of yeah, ESPs gotta, here, man. What's yeah. which one's number one? Uh, well, I'll start with one of my older ones. Uh, it's this Viper. It's one of the first ones I got from them. And uh, the like, striking. Yeah. The uh, the paint job. It's actually a vinyl. My buddy works for a, like a car wrapping company. They do vinyl wraps on All cars. Right. And he used his machine to die cut this for me. And that's how he kind of got that pattern. And as you can see, I dropped the neck pickup and just set it up to single pickup. And this was kind of the inspiration for my signature model and other customs that came after that. Have you always been like, I know obviously a thing that's really reminiscent of the Viper design is obviously SG. So did you start maybe at SGs or have yeah. you always kind of been with the yeah, Viper? Yeah, before I uh, started playing for ESP, the guitars I had was a pair of Gibson SGs. Oh, all right. So, yeah. And so what do you like about what ESP does with this body style and the setup? Um, I like that the ESP, they have a thicker body than an actual SG. Okay. So there's a little more weight to it. It's kind of, I always felt like they're almost in between a Les Paul and an SG, you know, they're not super yeah. heavy, but they've got a little weight. And I also like the way they cut the, the neck back here. Mm. There's no like joint in your way, so you can get to the high notes really Full easy. access, yeah. And they're also 24 fret, which is kind of nice just having that range. And here's a really dumb question, but I'll ask it: Is when you put that that uh, the layering on there, did you notice anything tonally that you heard? I didn't of? notice anything. Yeah, I, I've I've always wondered that because I've had guitars that I've slapped stickers all over. Yeah, and I think at one point we tried the A B one. We recorded it before we put stickers on it and covered it, and we didn't really notice no, anything. So yeah. so. And especially when you guys are probably playing at such high volume. Yeah, I think in a live like situation, it's probably not going to hurt it too bad. <laughs> yeah, right. It looks bitching though. So thank you. Kudos. But let's see the rest of these guys. Uh, so yeah, there's that one. Uh, then the first custom I got from ESP was this one. So this one they actually painted for me. They made it with just one pickup. I also made it string through. Just I wanted it to be as simple as possible mm -hmm. uh, through the the jack plate on the front because I have a habit of hitting the bottom of my guitar on like risers and things like that. So yeah. I'd break jacks. So put it on the face of the guitar. And yeah, I also switched to maple fretboard. And honestly, I did it for cosmetics. I wasn't sure how it was gonna sound. I just wanted to see what it looked like. Was there anything that you noticed now that you have switched and played on uh, it? Yeah, this noticed? one was a little brighter. It ended up being one of the main guitars we used on our uh, most rec recent record. Uh, we had it sent to the studio as soon as it was done just because I was so excited to see it. And Vic and I both kind of swapped back and forth using this for a lot of the stuff on the record. So right on. it came out awesome. And I know spec for a while they're using EMGs, it looks like you're using Duncan's now, at uh, least on that one. Yeah, uh, my the pickup that I have in the bridge of every guitar is a Seymour Duncan JB. And yeah, a lot of them have one pickup. Eventually I had one more guitar sent out that was uh, this one with a jazz up here, just because I didn't, I realized I didn't have any guitars with neck pickups and I didn't <laughs> yeah. get one, so they sent me this one. Uh, just more classic look, just gold and black. And yeah, and then eventually we made this one right here, which is my actual signature model. It's an LTD version. Uh, it's a green and black design. I used to have a guitar that I broke that was this colorway. Mm -hmm. So when Sam Ash approached us about doing a, a collab, they wanted the green one. So I was like, all right, let's do it. And it's the same as that white one, uh, string through body, single pickup. Um, I think maybe eventually if if there's a demand for it, I might do the white version someday. And so this was the actual one, like if someone yeah, this, buy Yeah, this one color. was released and you can go buy this one. It was a Sam Ash exclusive. I think they sold out online, but there's still some in stores. Gotcha. And what do you like, just going back to the pickup, what do you like about with the JB and the bridge versus, uh, you know, with the 85s or the 81s? I like the JB. Mostly the reason I went for it was because it still has enough gain. It's a pretty high output pickup, mm -hmm. but I can still get cleans out of it pretty easily. And with my rig, when we show you that part, for my cleans, I've always just rolled off the bottom. Yeah. So with that pickup, there's enough, you know, headroom to get both to clean it up. And you know, with the 81, it was kind of harder to get a clean tone out of it doing that. So understandable. And what about strings are you using? Strings on all these guys? Uh, <clears throat> all the guitars have Ernie Ball skinny top, heavy bottoms on them. So yeah, kind of best of both worlds. Yeah, it's it works. Most a lot of our stuff is either half step down or a half step like drop C sharp, mm -hmm. and so those strings kind of handle all of it. Cool. And what about these last two here? Are these just backups? Uh, Anything special about these two guys? Yeah, this is just 
a backup. It's the same kind of, same as that other one. My friend put the uh, uh, vinyl wrap on it. And Star Wars fan. Star Wars fans was another droid in that one. <laughs> but yeah, this one's just a backup. And then the last one we have in here is the Baritone, which I actually just got Ooh. right before this tour. It still has the EMG in it, but it's not active. It's just kind of holding this spot right now. Have you, you just got it, or did you guys have Baritone on previous recordings, or is this something you're uh, gonna play around and maybe We've get used inspired? Baritone on the records, okay. and up until now, I was kind of hesitant to try and play one. I would just get thicker strings than the regular guitars yeah. and, and tune it down to B. But yeah, they finally, they had this one sent out to me and fell in love with it, so now I just play this for all of our Baritone stuff. Cool, what songs would you like uh, specifically for Baritone uh, The main two tracks on this set are um, King for a Day, the last track that we play. It was our collab with uh, Kellen Quinn from Sleeping with Sirens. Right. So that one's tuned down to B, and also a song called Floral and Fading off the new record is also tuned down to B. It's kind of a more slow song, but it's still got that like heavy gotcha. low guitar in it. And um, talking specifically about playing the baritone, I mean, this, you can see the next line up fairly close, but do you feel like there's like a, a little learning curve to get at used to that? At first it was weird. You know, if, if I wasn't looking at the frets at first, you know, you'd realize like you'd, yeah, yeah. you can go up a little bit more. But uh, now that I'm used to it, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like being ready to play a different instrument almost. You kind of have to look at it that way. And yeah. since I'm playing those songs every time, I'm, I'm used to it now. Cool. And I assume the acoustic behind you is yours? Oh yeah. this. It's Martin. Uh, we have one acoustic song that we started doing on this tour. This is the first time we've done that. Usually when we do acoustic stuff, it was just Vic, so I picked up this Martin to bring out on this run. It's, what song are you guys awesome. doing? Um, we're doing a song called Kissing in Cars, got, and it's a, a song that uh, was actually not even written for any of our records. It was a song that Jaime's, uh, one of Jaime's best friends was getting married, and he, his buddy asked him to write a song for his wife. So his friend like wrote down all these things that they you know kind of turned into lyrics, and Vic and, and Jaime made this song as like wow. a wedding gift for them. And that's way better than the gift card. Yeah, or something and so and, and so it was supposed to just be for them, and eventually somehow it ended up on the internet and got leaked, and then it ended up being one of our more popular acoustic songs. So now we're playing it on this tour. It's actually the first time we played it on tour before. That's a cool life form of a song taking place and yeah. starting, and now you guys are performing it. Yeah. So let's move over to the next section, which is gonna be amps, but it yeah. uh, looks like Kemper time. Cool, yeah. Um, so in the rack, I'm using a Kemper. Uh, where my profile came from is this Marshall head that one of our friends uh, modded for me. It's a 1971 Marshall Super Lead. And what he's- What kind of stuff did you have to do to it? Or so what? the main, he has his own like kind of circuit that he puts in there that he doesn't want anyone to know about. He'll like scratch <laughs> off the, you know, whatever like writings on them, he'll yeah. paint them black so that no one can find out. But the main things he does is he he adds another gain stage, so there's another tube in there in the preamp section. Okay. He also adds a resonance knob to the back of it. He does something where he tells me it basically bypasses the low end around the, uh, the gain stage so that your low end's still kind of cleaner, mm. so it doesn't get muddy or distorted. And we've messed out around with other stuff too. At one point I tried adding another gain stage to it and it was <laughs> way too heavy but he did it for me anyway so we yeah. took it back out like it was just super loud do you ever use a resonance or, or if so like what what is that where's that come into play um it's i like the resonance a lot because when you're doing like a chunky low kind of palm meter or whatever it kind of brings that okay. that woof to life or whatever <laughs> and uh yeah so the resonance definitely comes in handy and what we did was we profiled this head because it's my baby yeah. into the kemper and uh, yeah, that's my main tone. And now that way when we travel overseas or you know, when we're moving around a lot, it's a lot easier to just have everything in one unit and not okay. have to worry about tubes or things dying like that. And but they, we do still you still have record with that guy? Yeah, yeah, we still keep this guy around for, for the records and stuff like that. But it's just a lot easier to just use the profile and kind of keep things simple that way. I imagine so. And you mentioned earlier, and I've seen in previous interviews, that when you lay your clean tones, you would just lay off the volume. Is that something you're still doing or do you have another patch in there? Uh, yeah, we did the exact same thing. We have the volume hooked up directly to the, the Kemper um, uh, for foot switch or whatever. And uh, <laughs> sorry. And yeah, I roll off the same way and it reacts the same way that this head used to when I rolled off volume wow. before. So instead of having all my pedals and all of that stuff there, it's all through this one unit. And I kind of set it up the same way that I would my pedal board. Instead of doing scenes or sequences, I have 
um, every song mapped out so that my tempos and delays and all that stuff are you know synced up perfectly. It's early in, yeah. But it's still set up with you know actual pedals because that's kind of just what I was used to. Yeah, seeing, you only you had know. a few that I remember. Yeah, so I have a, a phaser in there, and it's you know we modeled it after a phase ninety. That's what I use on the board. Yep. Um, a reverb, we just found like a nice hall reverb that was built in there and a, and a good delay. And then, yeah, like I said, delays are all pre-tapped out when I switch to each song. Uh, we also have a fuzz that's modeled after a pedal called the Hoof. Oh, and, yeah, uh, from Earthquaker? Yeah, and so that pedal sounds awesome. That's what we use to record um, Floral and Fading. That that tone was what inspired that entire song, like Damn. that the way it sounded. And uh, so we, we have that in there, too. What and, do you yeah. like about the phaser? I know that... Um, <clears throat> that you, at least the, the pictures of the videos that I saw back in the day were that you're using like the Phase 90, that the EVH one versus yeah, like the MXR. Yeah, I had the, the EVH 90. one for a while. I ended up switching back to the, the standard one because I wasn't really using the, the switch on the EVH one anyway, so uh -huh. I just went back to the standard orange one. But, but yeah, we use it a lot for, like anytime we do weird leads and stuff like that, it just kind of brings it to life. It gives it that kind of, I don't know, it just, that swell just kind of makes it sound so much yeah. cooler. So. We just throw it on in a lot of random parts, and uh, yeah. But other than that, it's a pretty simple board. Not a whole lot of effects going on here. Right on. And that, I probably imagine that one's just a backup. Yeah, we. Uh, I have my backup, and one of them is actually a powered version, so that when I go home and into the jam room, I can set that straight on top of a cab and plug in. All right on. Yeah. And what are you doing for like live sound? Are you guys going direct? Are you going in ears? Or do you? I'm have running. Cabs? I'm running straight. Uh, straight into our monitor board and I'm direct to my ears so there's no cabs or no anything on stage which also is great for our sound guy because he doesn't have to worry about my stage volume yeah does that mess with you guys stuff. that on a, being a, a band that I'm sure back in you know years ago you guys had, had cabs, cabs and, amps and everything and you could feel yeah. everything and you know um we for the most part for stuff that we feel we run like bass and kick and snare through the side fills to mm -hmm. kind of fill all that up but the ears that we have they sound so good nowadays and we've gotten so used to them that it's it's all there for me I'm used to that so it doesn't bother me that there's nothing on stage I guess if my ears do uh, break or anything when I'm on stage then I'll be in trouble, <laughs> being thrown off but yeah but so far it's been great you know cool man I, I think we got a pretty much uh, knocked out here pretty streamlined rig cool but uh, I appreciate you taking the time Tony awesome thank you thank you premier guitar Chris Keys another rig rundown <laughs> Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.